Hey everybody and welcome to another Jamovi tutorial. In this tutorial uh, I want to go ahead and show you how to do a simple multiple regression in Jamovi using the regression module here. As always I am attempting to use at time of recording the most recent build so Jamovi uh, I am currently using version 1.6.3 so far, um, newest one with the newest features. So let me get some data open, and we'll go through regression. Alrighty, so you can see here that I have uh, a new set of data open. This is from Jamovi's data library. It is the parenthood one, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this to uh, go through a regression example. And we're going to do a multiple regression example so we can uh, we can mess around with uh, all of the features of the module. So let's go up to regression and we'll go to linear regression. And so that is what we are going to pull up here. It's going to give us our uh, data and options module as well as our, our results. And you can see here that the model fit measures and the model coefficients are two default tables. So I am going to, um, I guess, what we'll say is we are going to put, um, we are going to estimate how much Dan sleep is, um, we're, so we're going to try to predict, so how much sleep Dan is going to get. Uh, from how much sleep the baby gets and what day it is that we are talking about. So here we already get our model fit measures and our model coefficients. So we get R and R squared or multiple R and multiple R squared. And we get our coefficients. So we get the estimate for our coefficients, which is going to be the B value. But you can see here that um, we don't have any other information that would be useful in, say, an APA style paper. So let's go through each of these options to see if we can beef up the, the results that we got. So let's go to Model Builder. Now, you can do... Uh, a simultaneous regression, which is what I just did, simultaneous multiple regression, where it's just the enter method and all covariates go in to try to predict the dependent variable all at once. But you can add more blocks and say, okay, well, maybe what we're going to do is we're going to just predict how much sleep Dan gets when the baby is. And so instead of putting uh, day into block one, we're going to add a new block and we are going to see how much change occurs, okay? And so we can get model-specific results here. So model 1 would just be baby sleep, and model 2 would, just, would be both baby sleep and day. And here a new table pops up with model comparisons. I will say that this feature here, this model builder, is 100% a a wonderful little feature to do stepwise or hierarchical linear regressions. This is something that steps it above its main competitor, JASP, in the open source market. Um, JASP currently does not have this feature. And as you can see, as I can add another block and see an additional model, what would happen to R squared, etc. Okay, which is one of the main measures that we're trying to get from doing a linear regression as opposed to just like maybe correlating baby sleep with Dan's sleep is, is getting this R squared change. Now, I'm going to leave it like this and I'm going to leave the model specific results on model two just so we can go through the rest of the uh, options here. Reference level, um, we don't have any uh, variables that require any sort of... Um, a dummy coding or a grand mean simple coding and if i suppose if i put in dan when he was grumpy 
uh, we would have to do that because that would come from these uh, nominal factors here. But we don't have any of that here, so we're going to go ahead and skip that one. Uh, assumption checks. I'm just going to check all of them just to show you what they do. So an autocorrelation will determine whether or not these covariates are uh, correlated too much uh, with themselves, basically, too correlated with themselves. Uh, collinearity statistics as well. You get the VIF and tolerance. Uh, and Shapiro-Wilk for no normality. Uh, doesn't look like we're having any issues with any of this data. You can get the QQ... Actually, I'm not going to get the QQ plots here. We can get the residual plots if we want to, and um, this will tell us what the the scatter plots look like for their residuals, so what those residual values are. And then we can get Cook's distance. Uh, where does distance... There, there it is. Cook's distance comes in under model summary, and it will give us the mean, median, and um, standard deviation, as well as the range. Now we're going to go ahead and close that and get model fit statistics, which is now, which is the very important um, aspect. So by default, you get R, multiple R, and multiple R squared. Big R and big R squared. <laughs> uh, you can also get adjusted R squared. This takes out some of the bias that R squared might come with when you do the, uh, when you do the arithmetic. Um, but really what's what I think should be default and you should gr get in all situations is your overall ANOVA, which is testing if uh, R squared is, is different from zero. And so I think that's a important. So you'll get an ANOVA. This is um, quite different from actually what you would get in J JASP or uh, SPSS, for example. It seems to put it in the model fit measures table as opposed to its own ANOVA source table here. So the uh, aspects of the ANOVA source table that aren't in here are like sums of squares and mean squares, um, which you know the, the degrees of freedom will uh, apply to, and that's how you get your p-values and your, your f-statistics and such. So this is a very condensed version of that. You can also get your AIC, BIC, and RM... SE, which is the root mean square error. Uh, and so these are different additional fit indices to determine whether or not your models are good. And uh, I don't know if it's apparent here, but, but model one, which again, was just the amount of baby sleep. And so uh, we can see here that it's a positive estimate. And uh, it's a significant positive coefficient. So for um, uh, for every hour of baby sleep, um, Dan gets you know 0 0.31 uh, hours of baby sleep. Great. And so you can see that with this R and this R squared of 0 0.394 or 0.39, and um, looking at it an f of 63.8 we definitely have a significant model now um on its face adding in the day does give us a little bit more information uh not terribly too much it's not a significant predictor on its own but um but the model is still significant. There's a, a, a small there's a, a a small increase in um, the R squared value. So the amount of variance that is uh, explained in Dan's sleep uh, when we include baby sleep and day in the model. Okay, and so. If day is not a significant predictor, then we can see that if we look at comparison, comparison, uh, comparing model one to model two, we get an R squared change of just 0.01. If I round that, 0.01. So this 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 change is actually not that big, and thus not significant. And you can see that the p-value really uh, is the same p-value for the coefficient. It's not always the case, but Generally speaking, if you have a lot of R squareds, uh, R squared changes, delta R squared is that what that's what this is, delta R squared. We can we can see that eh, model one is actually where the uh, most explanation for Dan's sleep comes from. The day doesn't really matter.
is is the conclusion that you would draw from here. Now we can get additional information for our uh, our coefficients table. So we can get the omnibus test. Oh, there it is. There's the omnibus test. Uh, great. Uh, so the omnibus test. I would. I don't. I'm. I'm not entirely sure why the model test is different from the omnibus test. They're essentially the same thing. Okay. So you can see 63.84 is 63.84, 197. Uh, the, I guess the degrees of freedom here are a little bit, except when you add in day for model two, you get the same thing. So uh, this seems a bit redundant to me, but in any case, you have it there. Here's the source table that I was talking about if you want to get your sums of squares and mean squares. Uh, we can also get confidence intervals for our intercepts, uh, for our intercept our uh, and our two predictors here. So we get the lower and upper ones. And then we can get, um, so this is B, the estimate is B, little b, Latin letter little b, or capital B if you... Uh, I've seen that before, but then we could also get the standard estimate, and this is beta. Um, the standardized estimate is beta, so you can see um, we can actually compare these two values to each other because these two units are in uh, these two coefficients, excuse me, are in different units. These two are in standardized units, and we can see that 0.63 is far bigger than even negative 0.1. So that tells us that uh, baby sleep as a predictor and an explanatory variable to how much sleep Dan gets, that's uh, that's important here. And you can see the day doesn't really matter. Day doesn't really matter. And you can also get the standard estimate for your, or the confidence interval for your standard estimate. I seem to be uh, talking over talking over my words here and there. Um, and you can get estimated marginal means if you want to. So we can drag uh, baby sleep here, and then we can also get day in as term two. And this should plop open another table. There we go. Estimated marginal means. Uh, these are the uh, plots here, and the lines that you see are the uh, confidence intervals. I believe these uh, shaded areas are confidence intervals for R2. Um, they are the, um, yes, confidence intervals here. And then you can get, uh, oh, here's why. I'm like, where's the table? It's because it's not on by default. <laughs> so, oh, it puts it in between. That's, that's slightly odd. Oh, I see. Okay, it gives a, uh, it gives a table for each of them, which is uh, interesting, all right, which is interesting. Here we get the marginal means, and uh, you have the, uh, oh, I see what it's doing. It's giving you the mean and then plus or minus one standard deviation. Okay, that's that's kind of interesting. Okay, I like that. I have not seen that before. That's an, that is a very helpful uh, chart and plot uh, because it gives you quite a bit more information than just the middle line here. So, hand, uh, hands raised, uh, raising the roof here for uh, the Jamovi team on um, just adding a comprehensive set of information for a fantastic linear regression module. Like, this is... Um, this is all the information and more that you would need for an EPA style uh, paper on this particular question that uh, is just, you know, a canned example of, of <laughs> sleep variables. So that's linear regression in Jamovi. If you like this content, please consider leaving a like and don't forget to subscribe. Please leave your comments and suggestions and feedback down below in the comment section. There's more Jamovi coming. Thanks for watching. Bye.